Have you ever experienced relational pain? You know, those interpersonal relationships that cause you deep pain and heartache, maybe even rejection or betrayal. Most of us have experienced relationships that cause pain, but sadly, it's not something that we talk about very often. So how do we deal with it? And what happens in the fallout? And how do we move on? Today, we're going to be talking about relationship pain. In my new book, The Hem of His Garment, Reaching Out to God When Pain Overwhelms, we talk about the fact that people can really relate to physical pain. Most of us have stubbed a toe or broken an arm or gotten a sunburn. We can all relate to physical pain. Yet there's other types of pain like emotional pain and relationship pain, spiritual pain, and even secondary pain that's caused by the words or the actions of others. So I want to invite us to open up the conversation about these less discussed about types of pain so that we can learn how to cope, heal, and move on. Welcome back to another episode of your Hope-Filled Perspective, where it's always our goal to restore hope renew minds, and empower listeners to live in your God-given identity. I'm your host, Dr. Michelle Bankson, and I'm so grateful that you're here. I think that this is an important topic, and today we're talking about relationship pain. And to start off this episode, I just want to remind you of Psalm 5, verse 11, that says, But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy, and may you shelter them, that those who love your name may exalt in you. Today, I've invited my friend Jessica Van Ruckel to come on the episode and have a conversation with me about relationship pain. You may remember Jessica. She's been on the program a couple of times before talking about rejection and how we can look at rejection through a different lens. So it only seemed natural to have her back on the program to talk about relationship pain. But if you didn't get to meet her in one of the previous episodes, here's what you need to know. She's a worship leader, a speaker, and a writer who believes that through Jesus, personal histories don't need to define the present or determine our future. She inspires, encourages, and equips others to look at life through the lenses of hope, trust, and God's transforming grace. She lives in rural Iowa, surrounded by wide open spaces, which remind her of God's expansive love. She loves fun earrings, good coffee, and connecting with others. Thank you for connecting with us today, Jessica. Thank you for having me. I am just so happy to be here, even though we are talking about a not so happy subject, relational pain, but I'm excited that you and I get to sit down and have this conversation because I really believe that we've got some hope to offer your listeners. I think we do too. And I just think it's an important topic for us to discuss because if you and I have discussed in private before, Mm -hmm. this is one of those areas that we don't talk about a whole lot, but the more I've come to realize is most of us do experience some kind of relational pain, Mm -hmm. whether it's between good friends or family members or parents and siblings, coworkers, We all experience it at some point. Yes, we do. (laughs) We're all familiar with the concept of pain. And when someone breaks a leg or they have surgery, people can relate and feel a sense of compassion. But we rarely talk about this thing that I refer to as relationship pain. Have you ever experienced relationship pain? Yes. In fact, I, I have experienced relationship pain. Um, In fact, I've done a lot of my life trying to avoid relationship pain, but really what I discovered is that it's part and parcel of living in community with each other. It, unfortunately, it is true. We are not perfect representatives of God's everlasting love and faithfulness. Um, We are still works in progress. So we are going to hurt one another and we are going to feel hurt 
by others. And, and so, yes, I have experienced relational pain and it runs the gamut of deep heart wrenching relational pain from, you know, the loss of a close friend to, to the more of the more, um, less painful, but still uncomfortable of losing, you know, maybe a coworker, there's a misunderstanding or, you know, someone that you thought you knew turned out, maybe you didn't know as well as you thought you did. And so then you had to deal with that. Oh, I'm disappointed or, Oh, I feel betrayed or, Oh, I just, I really miss my friend. What happened? How come I didn't see this coming? Those types of things. So yes, I've experienced the depths of relational pain. And sometimes it, you know, it felt like I got tossed in those blenders, you know, the little smoothie blenders and you put this ingredient, you know, I was in it, my friend was in it and, and then everything was great. And then all of a sudden someone pressed the power button, just chopped me all up. And, and I was like, what, what the heck happened here? I thought, I thought we were going to be lifelong friends. And it turned out that you're just gone. You're just out of my life. And, and it, it can take a lot of time to recover um, because there's a lot of underlying um, issues that relational pain kind of stirs up. How about you, Michelle? Have you experienced relational pain? Oh, I wish that I could say no, but yes, I have, whether it's misunderstandings in the work environment to losing a friendship and never really fully understanding why or having a chance to receive reconciliation. Yeah, I've experienced relationship pain many times throughout my life. And I think what is so difficult when we experience pain of any kind, but maybe even more so if I can dare say that about relationship pain is that we're not in control. No. So often we don't know what happened. We don't know how we were misinterpreted or why we were judged the way we were or what people's perception of us was that led to a break. And that's what makes it so difficult and so painful is that it makes it hard then to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's like when you oh, stub your toe or break your toe, you know what caused exactly. the breaking of the toe, you know, whether, I, well, I'm saying that on my own experience, I've broken my baby toe twice because <laughs> I ran it, ran it into, you know, the toilet. Well, the toilet was in the way or I was in too much of a hurry. And so that's just it. I can find the source yes. of why I broke my toe twice. So maybe it takes me a couple of times to learn my lesson, you know, of what not to do. But when you're, when you are just this, you don't know why you lost a relationship. You don't know why this friendship ended. It can kind of leave you scrambling Yeah. because I I think I want to fix things. I want things to be peaceful. I, if there's something in me that needs, you know, adjusting, I want to know what it is so that I can do that. But But the thing with relationship pain and relationships is there's a whole nother person involved with a whole nother set of behind the scenes stories and um, experiences that they're bringing to the relationship as well. And even if we have some clue about what the origin of that relationship pain was, it sometimes doesn't help to know why something went awry when the other person is not open to reconciliation. And that brings a whole nother level of pain that I talk about in the hem of his garment, because that brings grief and loss. Yes. And not that God can't heal it, but it's harder to heal when you want the healing, Mm -hmm. but the other person does not. Yes. Yes. That... Oh, that's a hard one. Why do you think that people aren't more open to discussing relationship pain like the discussion we're having today? Why don't people talk about it more? Oh, well, lots of reasons. I mean, it's a vulnerable vulnerability. There's that. Um, There's also, for me personally, I don't want to spread bad reports 
And so often when I'm hurting, when I really truly in the depths of a fresh hurt from a relationship that's gone awry, there is a risk of not dealing with just my own pain, but directing anger and wanting almost revenge and, and not in a more of a, well, they caused me this much relationship pain. So then therefore I want to cause them relationship pain. And so for me personally, sometimes I don't talk about this aspect on a wide, um, with a wide group of people, because I know my tendency toward not sticking with just my own hurt but wanting then to inflict the same kind of hurt on someone else. And and here I am sharing it with how many people that are listening, friends, future friends. I truly want you to hear my heart. I know my tendency towards stepping over the line and not having a God-honoring response. So I wrestle between dealing with my hurt and my pain within what I know is right before God. And so I like to talk about this with someone. I have one or two close friends that I know will listen, but will point me to Jesus. They will point me to, well, what does God's word say about this? Ah, forgiveness. You know, there are some people in our lives that they want to get right in the mess with you, not to bring you to healing, but to keep stirring the pot. And what does Proverbs say about pot stirrers? Stay away. I think the other piece of this about why people don't discuss it more is because if we do, like you say, take that risk to share our hurt and our pain with someone else. We've already been hurt. So Mm. then we run the risk that whomever we open up to and share, we run the risk that then they too take the other person's side, even if they don't know the other person and reject us. Yes. And so I think especially in Christian circles, we don't share we don't become that vulnerable, but the other pieces is I don't want to gossip. Exactly. Because I really know better than the next. Mm -hmm. I don't want to share this in under the guise of, I really need prayer in this relationship, but then what it does is it harms the other person's reputation, even if they were in the wrong. Yeah. I don't want to speak badly about someone. And so how do we I think this holds us back is expressing our hurt and not speaking poorly of someone else or creating a gossip train or risking, like you said, someone taking a side. Yeah, there's so many factors involved. And I think that's why we don't discuss it more openly. Mm -hmm. But then the fallout of that is then we start to believe the lie that we're the only ones who have experienced it. So shame on us. So that just heaps more hurt when we're already hurting. Yeah, because, or for my aunt, I will like, okay, well, I'm going to close the doors to new friendships. Yes. I'm not going to let anybody else in. And now my close friends, I'm, I struggle with being suspicious. Are they going to turn on me? Are they going to reject me? Are they going to wake up one day and be like, oh, our 12 years of friendship really don't mean anything. So, you know, we're not going to be friends anymore, or we're going to go from close friends to, oh, just a casual acquaintance. I'm sorry. I can't make that leap like that. That doesn't, I, I don't know how, I don't know how that happens, but I do think then we think we just bottle it all up. We think, well, there must be something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only person that this happens to, because look at, look at, look at those people on Instagram. They're having so much fun. Look at that person's out all the time with her friends. And here I am. I don't know if I can trust people anymore. I'm kind of scared of my current friends because what might happen? Oh, this is so deep. It's like an onion. And as we start to peel back the pain, then there's Mm -hmm. more layers that require healing and more Mm -hmm. layers. In discussing relationship pain, let's talk about some of the ways 
that it comes up? How do we experience it? What are some of the ways that you're aware of that relationship pain invades our life and our heart? Right. Well, a biggie one, and I've written about this is rejection. You know, just the, and the, there's different types of rejection and each of them, I, I think can feel at a different level in our lives and our hearts. Um, some of the other ones, even just judgment, you know, someone's judge judgment, they, we judge each other on our actions. We judge other people on our, on our actions and we judge ourselves on our intentions. And, and so it can be really hard being the recipient of someone's negative judgment. Um, Criticism is another one. I was a serial people pleaser for a long, long time. And I still wrestle against that because criticism is so crushing to me. And I, and I read criticism as rejection and and that is that way. And it feels that way. It feels that way. Um, uh, So sometimes we have, like you said earlier, when we sever a relationship with no explanation, when you just wake up with a dear John letter in your email inbox or really nothing, you know, the whole ghosting phenomenon is crazy. Really? That's a, that's a, those are some of the typical, I think, ways we experience relationship pain. And I'm not sure that we can grade any of them. Pain is pain. Yes. And yes. you may have experienced it in the form of rejection. And I may have experienced it in the form of ghosting or the criticism. But the overall fallout then is pain. It's and pain. we have to acknowledge it mm-hmm. before healing can start taking place. Absolutely. We both acknowledge what our known role in it was and even acknowledge that there may be pieces of this puzzle that we're never going to understand, especially I think what hurts the most for me is when I don't have the opportunity to hear what someone thought I intended or thought that I did or perceived my motives to be or I don't have the opportunity then to even go to them and ask for forgiveness. Even if my intent wasn't what they assumed it was, that's Mm -hmm. what hurts so bad in relationship pain is when we're not able to move forward in the ways that we've been trained to deal with relationship, even from a biblical perspective. Yes. Yes. That is so true. Yep. Let's talk for a minute about what are some of the typical reactions to relationship pain. You mentioned receiving that rejection. And so then you you tend to close the door on other relationships. Yeah. But we could even we can even go just a step not so deep mm-hmm. without being offended. Yeah. That, I mean, that one, I, I have to raise my hand and say, you know, I've had to work really hard at choosing Mm -hmm. not to be offended because it really is my choice whether or not I'm going to take on an offense. And then what am I going to do with it? What Mm -hmm. are other ways that you have reacted to relationship pain? Well, defeat, Mm -hmm. like defeat. Mm -hmm. Well, why do I try? You know, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to just be an amoeba on a log for the rest of my life. You know, I, I kind of get a defeatist mentality. Uh, another way that I will do is um, fear, fear of current relationships yes. ending the way that the one that ended, ended. Um, so then I'm always afraid, which then <laughs> leads me to insecurity which leads me to a little bit of a clingy friend or, you know, resisting the urge to always ask, are we okay? Have I done anything that offended you? Um, I need you. I'm going to call you way more than I used to, you know? So some, for me, fear shows it's up. So shows itself up in insecurity. Um, what you are describing is a real slippery slope. <laughs> And that's why I call it an onion, because there are so many different layers, both in terms of how we receive that pain and how we perpetuate the pain. I know for me, one of one of my 
typical response is, is to get defensive mm, mm-hmm. instead of having a posture of humility and seeking reconciliation. When you've hurt me, then I want to defend myself. I want to explain to you why I did what I did or why I didn't do what I didn't do. And when we're really hurt, there can be a tendency to want retaliation, like you mentioned earlier. Man, yeah. they hurt me so bad. I hope that they hurt as bad as I do. Yeah. I, or I they hurt me so bad. Like, like behavior. No, I, I know. And and or I'm like, they hurt me so bad. I need to rally the troops around me. Yeah. yeah. Which that's not a godly response either. Right. No, it's not. And then if we take it kind of to the nth degree, mm-hmm. a typical response to a lot of different types of relationship pain is grief and mourning, yeah. which I actually think is very healthy if it's done within some good boundaries. It's mm-hmm. healthy Yes. To start healing. Yes. But we have to be real careful in our grief and mourning, especially when it comes to relationship pain, not to get stuck on the self-pity bus. Yeah. That can hinder our healing. It can. It can. Anytime, anytime we turn the focus so much on ourself through self-pity or insecurity, you know, inward focused. Yeah. Um, it does, it kind of arrests our forward momentum and there's, there's a risk of missing an opportunity for whether for God to do something amazing in our life for, or even to see how God is going, is using this painful experience in our life. And so that's a risk of, of self-pity. When I think about our typical responses, at least those that you and I have it admitted to. Maybe others don't struggle the same way, although I suspect many do. You mentioned the point that we tend to get really inward focused. Yeah. But if we will go back to scripture and Mm. how the kingdom economy works, we're not supposed to be inward focused but no. focused on others. But having said that, for our listeners who might be experiencing relationship pain, mm-hmm. it is okay to acknowledge that pain and to take it to the Lord and to say just how bad it hurts. It's a matter though, are are we going to dwell on the good things or are we going to dwell on what the other person did? You know, Jessica, we talked about some of the typical reactions to relationship pain, but sometimes our first response is not the best. And I would be the first to raise my hand. Me too. Me too. And I think the reason that our first response is not the best so often is because we react out of our pain. Yes. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for what are some better ways to respond as opposed to being offended, being angry, seeking revenge, getting defensive, isolating and closing off the doors. Those Mm -hmm. are all typical responses, but not Mm -hmm. particularly healthy. How about some healthier responses? Well, I'm a huge fan of the Psalms because it has taught, the Psalms really have taught me how to process negative emotions. The psalmists are so real. They're so raw. They don't hold anything back. So oftentimes we do, our natural tendency is to respond in the ways that we discussed earlier, but we are members of an upside down kingdom. You know, God's kingdom is topsy turvy. And so I, I definitely don't believe that we should deny our feelings or deny the reality of what happened. But I think the best expression of those is happens within the confines of our relationship with God. So when I experience relationship pain, the first thing I like to do is just halt, just stop and not, not stop as in stop life or stop the feelings, but just stop 
I can't make any major decisions about opinions of how I actually feel about the situation until I process the painful emotions. And so I like to do that within God and within his word and with him. So almost before I go talk to a close friend who I trust, Mm -hmm. I talk to Jesus about it first. And if I don't have the words to say, I just flip open to some of the Psalms because I can read in there. You know, David was really good about calling down God's um, vengeance on his enemies. (laughs) And so sometimes that's exactly what I feel in the moment. But do I really want that? No, I don't really feel that way about my enemies, but it gives me a context of, and a freedom to actually be gut level honest with God. And in that honesty, I think it's important for us to go to God and ask him to show us Mm -hmm. where we need to be forgiven. Yes. Yes. And even if that other person whether they're they're right in their perception or not, whether or not they will allow us to even ask their forgiveness, we can ask for that forgiveness from God. Because if we have done something to hurt someone else, we have also hurt the heart of the father. Yeah. But I think uh, I was just going to say along with that, you know, relationships are two way street. Even if we think that we are, you know, the victim in the situation, there's something that, that we may have contributed. You know, sometimes I can be really strongly opinionated to the point where it doesn't sound like I'm leaving room for anyone else's opinion. And I've had to repent of that. And I've had to learn how to, to, um, live my strong opinions with grace. Mm -hmm. I like that. Live your strong opinions with grace. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. The old adage is true that hurt people. Yes. Hurt people. Yes. And so when someone else causes us relationship pain, there is a very, very high probability that they have been hurt. Yes. Yes. Either by something we've done or Mm. said or not done Mm -hmm. or not said, they may have taken an offense. Yeah. Yeah. And when we go to God and we ask his forgiveness, I I would recommend trying to seek reconciliation. Absolutely. With with the person, but that is not always possible. I've been in situations where the door was locked shut. And And the key was thrown away. It was thrown away. And then I have to process with God. So you also need to extend forgiveness to the one who inflicted the relationship pain on you. Oh, for sure. And that's so hard to do. It It is. is. Oh, forgiveness is. I just have to say this. If you, when I feel like, whenever I feel like I can't forgive, I usually say, God, help me forgive. Yes. Help me forgive. Yes. Lord, I forgive them. Help me forgive. And, and it's one of those things where it's almost as if sometimes that's an hourly prayer. Lord, I forgive them. Help me forgive. Forgive me for being offended. God, I forgive them. Help, help me forgive. And it becomes just this, this repeated prayer that I truly do mean because I know the, the risk that happens to my heart when I have unforgiveness and bitterness in my life. And so I want to live in a place of forgiveness towards others, but I also have to deal and process with the pain and the emotion. And a lot of times I want to deny that this happened. And so sometimes I have to surrender to the reality of, okay, I didn't want this outcome, but this is my outcome. So now I'm wrestling then not only with forgiveness, but also acceptance Mm. of this unwanted outcome of this relationship. And I don't know if this has happened to you, Jessica, but there have been times when I thought I had forgiven. I know I have forgiven, Mm -hmm. but something will happen. And it, it's like Mm. a reminder all over again. And I'm back in that place when the initial relationship pain happened. 
Oh, and I've yeah. got to do it again. I've got yeah. to forgive again. Yep. Yeah. But sometimes the hardest person to forgive is to forgive ourselves when we recognize we did do something. Yeah. We yeah. did do something to hurt another. Yes. And to look at it from that perspective, mm. we've got to forgive ourselves as yeah. well. Yes. Yeah. But you mentioned a really important point, and I think we would be remiss if we didn't bring this up. And, and that is that sometimes that relationship is over mm-hmm. and we have to move on. And it was a very hard, hard, painful lesson for me to realize that sometimes it's even God who removes people from yeah. our lives. Yeah. And when God does that, the last thing he wants is to go chasing after a relationship Mm -hmm. that he's already tried to protect us from. Right. Right. It can be hard. It can be really hard because, you know, we, we have this perception of God being a loving God. And, you know, when I think of that, I think warm, fuzzy feelings. But then I also remember when I was parenting my young children I came across this phrase that love does what is best, not necessarily what the person wants. And I think that's how God loves us is that he loves us into what is best for us, which sometimes does cause us pain, but he doesn't do it because he doesn't like us. He does it because he loves us and he can see far more than we can see. We see this one inch square of this intricate tapestry, but God sees it all. Mm -hmm. And if he can, if I believe, and I trust that he sees it all and he knows it all, and he has my good in mind and he is for me and not against me, then, then for whatever reason, this painful relationship or this relationship that has ended that caused so much pain, he is going to use for some purpose, whether it's to protect me, whether it's, it's, um, he has wanted to take me down a different path. Maybe our paths will diverge eventually. So we're going to um, go ahead and just trust him with it. But God loves us enough to do what is best for us. And if we, sometimes I forget that sometimes what's best for us might inflict temporary pain on me. Mm-hmm. Another tip that I just want to make sure that we touch on, because I'm sure we've got some listeners who right now are in the throes of relationship pain Mm -hmm. yeah, of any form or nature. It's hard to remember when you've been so wounded by the hand or the words of another. It's hard to remember, but I want you to remember that even if you have experienced relationship pain from another person or you've been rejected or betrayed Mm -hmm. or abandoned, more important than that though, is to remember that we've already been accepted by Jesus. Yeah. We'll read in Ephesians 1 verses 3 and 6, it talks about the fact that Jesus has blessed us with every spiritual blessing And he's made us accepted in him. So as you're dealing with the pain over here of our relationship, Mm. try to counterbalance that with the fact that, but on this other hand, you've been accepted by the one who is the only one that truly matters. Exactly. And it reminds me of Abraham. You know, he accepted the reality. The reality was, is that he was old and his wife was old. But he believed God's promise that God was going to give them a child. And so it's similar when we're experiencing relationship pain. The reality is our hearts are broken. The reality is, is that we are angry. We're offended. We're grieving. We're struggling with forgiveness. That is our reality. And I don't think we should deny our reality, but we shouldn't deny the fact that God accepts us, even if man rejects us. So we, we can learn to live with both of those realities, but know that the ultimate truth is, is that you are accepted 
You are accepted regardless of what someone else says, because God says so. Yes. And I love Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. God accepts you. This I know. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. Relationship pain is gut wrenching oh, at yeah. a level that's just it's just different from the other types of pain that I talk about in the hem of his garment. But especially if we feel like we've been unfairly judged or criticized, mm -hmm. or especially when we aren't even sure what we did to contribute to this break in a relationship, mm -hmm. just what would you recommend to someone it, when it feels like God isn't coming to their defense, or maybe it doesn't feel like he's healing that relationship hurt. What would you recommend? Oh, well, I would recommend stilling your heart. Be still, be still and know that he is God. So those, that feelings of abandonment, my friend has abandoned me, this relationship I'm abandoned in here. Now God isn't acting. So has he abandoned me? No, he's, he's got you wrapped up, wrapped up in his arms and we're wrestling and we're, we're like, you're not acting the way I want you to act. And he's like, I got you, girl. I got you. You're in my arms. Be still know that I am God. Know within, within your heart that no matter what happens, I am still God rest in my arms. Trust me to work on your behalf, but right now I need you to be still in my presence. Be still and trust that he is working when we can't mm -hmm. see it. We don't feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah. when I was so severely wounded, probably the worst relationship hurt I've ever experienced. And I really, I, I knew God knew my heart mm -hmm. and it wasn't all the things that I'm pretty sure that the other person perceived. I knew God knew my heart. I'm like, Lord, you know me, search me and know my heart and reveal if there's any wicked way in me. But the, mm -hmm. I really sensed that he was saying, no, I, I do know you intended love. You intended the best mm -hmm. in this relationship mm -hmm. and what I had to cling to because I wasn't seeing justice and I wasn't seeing reconciliation and I didn't feel like God was healing the hurt fast enough. Cause let's face it, when we're in pain, that's what we want. We want yeah. God to heal the hurt. Let's move on and have rainbows yeah. and unicorns. And that's not how pain works. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the thing that I clung to was Psalm 23, five, mm -hmm. and that's the promise. I love how you talked about, you go to the Psalms. Well, Psalm 23, five says you prepare a feast for me in the presence mm. of my enemies and you honor me by anointing my head with oil, yeah. my cup overflows with blessings. And I had to cling to that. I may not see it, mm -hmm. may not see it in the natural, but God is the judge. He is my defender. He will shield me. He will comfort me. He will heal me, but healing is a process. So in the meantime, I just had to stand on that promise. When, when the Bible says, will consider that a promise. And that Please. verse is you will prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Yeah. We still get God's blessing. Yeah. And that helped soften mm. the pain a little bit so that I could then start to move towards healing. Yeah. That's so good. How is our response to relational pain sometimes necessary to be different than other forms of pain? In that we often can't move on mm -hmm. from physical pain until healing happens or emotional pain mm -hmm. or grief until God starts doing the healing. Yeah. How do you think relationship pain can be different than those? Well, I liken it a little bit to, you know, physical pain. When we're in physical pain, we can, you know, take pain relievers. We can, you know, put our sprain an ankle. We can rest it. We can ice it. We can give it heat. We can numb the pain. 
And I think with relational pain, we do try and medicate our relational pain through, you know, mind numbing, social media scrolling through, you know, watching an entire season of a show in one afternoon through, um, you know, substances, we, we will, we can set barriers up in our hearts so that thinking that if we just numb this relational pain, then it'll heal on its own. Just like with our leg, if, if our, if we sprain our ankle, if we numb it or ice it or heat it, we rest it, we just, you know, it'll heal on its own. But I think with relational pain, we need God's intervention to bring about our healing, but we can either put barriers up Mm -hmm. to prevent that or prolong the healing, which actually, if we wait too long to deal with relational pain, it gets infected. It gets, you know, we get gangrene of our heart and our soul and our spirit. And so that, I think that is where I've gotten myself into big trouble treating my heart pain the same as I would if my arm was broken or, you know, I broke my toe or, you know, just I sprained an ankle or I have physical pain. We have to take it straight to the word. We have to go to God straight away. And we have to remember some key points. Number one, that he is God. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He is God. He's number one in my life. Then we can remember that he accepts us no matter what people might be saying about us. God is my defender. He is my father. He is my bread of life. He's my living water in him. I will see in him. I will have hope. Then we trust him. We have to trust him. And these, these incidences in our life really give us an opportunity to practice trusting him. Are we going to trust him to defend us? Well, he says he will, but he sure isn't acting as fast as I would like him to. So maybe he doesn't defend me. You know, that that's, that's the battle in our mind that we have to counterbalance with weight. We say, wait a minute, God is my refuge right now. I'm resting. I'm hiding in his refuge or his banner over me is love. That's his standard. He is fighting for me. And I just have to wait and be still. And then we, we surrender, we surrender to, Instead of thinking, I wish this wouldn't have happened, or I wish I would have said something different, or I wish I wouldn't have met that person in the first place. You know, all of those wishes don't really help us in our present. They happened. The good things happen. We rejoice for them. The bad things happen. We're like, I wish I wouldn't have happened. But we surrender our good and our bads to the Lord's working in our lives. That was a long way to answer that question. But we have to treat our relational pain different than physical pain. We have to get on it immediately and not with what we think is going to numb our hearts or make us feel better. And I think two other things that can be helpful for healing from relationship pain. One you talk about in your book, Reframing Rejection, and that is we choose then how we will interact in future relationships and we can either withdraw and develop this hard stony heart or we can choose to put ourselves out there and still have a soft heart towards other relationships yes even if you've been hurt and you've experienced relationship pain don't allow that to divide you and separate you and isolate you from future relationships that God might be bringing in its place. Mm. And the second thing that I think is so important is to recognize that sometimes when we've done all we can do on our own, when we've done all that God has asked us to do, sometimes in relationship pain, God calls us to shake off the dust off our feet and move on. Yep. Reconciliation is not possible. And that's a whole nother level of healing because we've we've got to face the fact that sometimes in this life, that relationship may not be restored. Yes. If God's calling us to move on, shake off that dust, Mm -hmm. it's so that we can continue to heal going forward. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's, it's like sometimes, you know, we knock on a door 
for far too long. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying we shouldn't give a little bit of attempt at reconciliation. I think we should give as much as we can towards reconciliation, but if that is not possible, then yes, we need to praise God for the relationship, for the good that was in that relationship, and then surrender the hurt and the pain and what actually happened, how it ended. And then move on and live with a soft heart and open, open hearted, open armed life to new relationships. Because we are not meant to live isolated. We are meant to live in community with God and with each other. Jessica, if a listener is resonating with our conversation, and I suspect there's probably many, because as we've talked about, it's hard to talk about relationship pain. But if they're resonating with our conversation today, what hope-filled perspective would you want to leave them with? I would want you to know that you're not alone. That God is with you. He doesn't respond to us the way that we respond to each other. That he loves you with an everlasting love. That his love endures forever And that he wants to be your number one friend. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be the person that you run to and that you talk to. And um, he wants you to know that he is your refuge and you can hide in him. And I would, friend, I would just leave you with Hebrews 13, verse six, that says, so we say with confidence the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Mm. You are struggling in a place of relationship pain right now. Remember, God knows your heart. He will be your defender. He has already accepted you. Mm. And really, he wants to provide you with help, hope, and healing through this. So turn to him. Yeah. Jessica, thank you for having this conversation with me, this really hard conversation, but I appreciate your vulnerability because I think as we open up about this, Mm. other people will realize the importance of finding a trusted friend that they can talk to. Yes. Well, thank you for inviting me to share about this subject. And I just pray for anyone who's dealing with the the depths of relational pain, whether it's fresh or whether it's old, but you still need to process through it to, to take the courageous step to go to God and to turn to those Psalms and p- learn to pour out your heart to him and, and then to turn, turn to your heart to him. So pour out your heart to him and then point your heart to him and, and you're going to find immense healing. Friends, today's conversation was spurred because it's one of the types of pain that I talk about in my new book, The Hem of His Garment, Reaching Out to God When Pain Overwhelms. We all know about physical pain, but today we talked about relationship pain. We're also going to be having conversations about emotional pain and spiritual pain Mm -hmm. and secondary pain that's inflicted by others that makes all of the other pain worse, as well as grief and mourning. We all know someone who's going through some kind of pain or they just gotten through it, or they might be about to walk into it. Would you consider picking up a copy of the hem of his garment and blessing them to give them hope, help, and healing from whatever pain ails them? And would you consider sharing this podcast episode? We need to be talking about relationship pain. And I know that in your circle of friends, somebody is dealing with that now. Consider sharing this with them. And while you're at it, would would you consider subscribing to the podcast so you don't miss another episode of your hope-filled perspective? Rate, review it, let us know what episodes you enjoy, what you'd like us to have conversations about, and how we can serve you better. Until next week, it's my prayer for you that you have a hope-filled perspective.